Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. The wise men have come to the worst imaginable man in all of Jerusalem, Herod, one of multiple Herods. Uh, we, we've seen that in our, in our study of Matthew. And they've asked him where the one born king of the Jews is. So now they've unwittingly set into motion a series of events that would lead to the fulfillment of another prophecy, which we'll talk about next week as we look at Revelation. But what they've also done is prompted Herod's team to go back to the archives and pull out this old, what is it called again? Oh yeah, the Word of God. <laughs> they have come to worship the one born King of the Jews. Huge point of insecurity for Herod. Okay, he's just been put there as an appointee of Rome, uh, ostensibly to quell this dispute between the Pharisees and Sadducees, see the holding over tensions from the Hasmonean dynasty. And moreover, there's speculation that he was, that he was an Edomite, that he may have been a descendant from Esau. And so, man, it was preordained before the twins were even born that the older would serve the younger. This was all to show God's sovereign purpose in electing Israel and how it might stand. Uh, not, to, not, not because of anything that the twins had done, but just so that God's purpose in electing Israel over Edom, God's purpose in election might stand, this was preordained. And so, wow, if Herod was an Edomite, then man, he's massively insecure. And now there's one who's been born king of the Jews. When Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Christ would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because of what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. This is Micah chapter 5, verse 2. This is a centuries old prophecy. And now the story checks out. All right, they've gone back and they have, they have uh, brought out the, the prophet Micah. And they're even specific as to which Bethlehem here. And you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. There were two Bethlehems in the ancient world. This particular Bethlehem was just a few miles south of Jerusalem, right under Herod's nose. It's partly why he would fly into such a rage after, you know, the party runs out and they run out of apple cider. Like, he, he, he freaks out. He's deeply disturbed, verse 3 says, but all of Jerusalem with him is what verse 3 says. So word began to spread. People were distressed by this news. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Christ would be born. And they're specific. It's not just the other Bethlehem. It's the Bethlehem of Judea. This is the Bethlehem that God has not overlooked because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Micah was prophesying with specificity centuries in advance. God was at work. And when we see the word of God with prophecy and fulfillment right in front of our eyes, our responses are varied and our responses are telling. There are some people who look at a clear prophecy and fulfillment and the word of God and are like, praise Jesus. God is sovereign. I confess my sin. I trust in the Lord, the author of history. But there are other people who are like, burn it. I don't want to hear about it. And that was the Herodian response. Which are you?